All right. So <laughs> it seems we're going to have some early commerce this evening. Um, wait, no, not early commerce. We're going to have some late commerce this evening. But well, so for today, I am here to develop class number seven. And uh, well, there are many things that we will have to be covering during this lesson. Um, thank you for joining, Joel. Welcome. I was, uh, I'm not crazy, okay? I was just recording the class because um, there was no one around. And well, we have the obligation to still develop the topic. But anyway, now that you're here, I can um, start back and explain the fact that for tonight, uh, we are going to be developing class number seven, in which we're going to be covering, um, well, part of a topic and a conversation that I consider to be very, very relevant when it comes to the different ways in which we can learn or in which we can improve our English skills. Because, of course, that's the main reason why we're here. That's the, the, the reason why every night we, you know, get together and start talking about, well, the language we want to learn. So um, we're going to be using by plus a gerund, which is a form of passive voice, but not as strictly um, a passive voice. It's just something that kind of relates or is um, somehow similar to the passive voice. Um, but anyway, that's part of what we're going to be covering. Um, when we get uh, more people coming as well, I hope we can get to talk a little bit about the, well, the plans we may have for the coming holiday um, as the practice for the evening. And of course, we are also going to be, well, doing a little bit of a practice from the topic we had yesterday, which was would rather or would prefer, which um, it's also very, very important for us to have it like completely clear and have the full idea on how we're going to be using those two words or those two phrases that are, of course, relevant when we want to, um, well, get to know how someone um, has preferences over something else. Um, so that's part also of what we are going to be, um, to be covering. But before we get to that, tell me, Joel, how are you doing? Good evening, teacher. Um, sorry, what, what was the question? How are you good doing? Evening, sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Enjoy. I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. What about you? Well, all good. You know, um, it has been a pretty hot day here in, in, in San Diego. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Maybe because we got some, did you, did it rain yesterday where you live? In San Salvador? Mm -hmm. No, yesterday it didn't rain. Oh, well. But here we got some rain. We're act it's actually kind of raining right now. It's it's drizzling at the moment, but uh, maybe that's what's causing. I have it. a friend. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who lives there, mm -hmm. and he told me about one hour ago that it was raining there in San Miguel. Yeah, here where I live is not actually like raining, fully raining. It's more like drizzle. But yeah, it's um, still, you know, it, it makes the whole environment go a little bit hotter than regular. Because yesterday, yes. as it was actually a full on rain, um, it was better because it, it basically um, cooled everything down and it was feeling better. But yeah, during the day today, because it was very humid, it was it was horrible. <laughs> like it was really, really hot. Okay, so um, it seems like, well, the, the rest of the class are coming late or probably not coming. Therefore, we are going to start, well, working at once. Hopefully, we're going to have more people coming over in a minute. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, the main thing we're going to be covering this evening is um, going to be <clears throat> by plus the use of gerunds. Now, um here this of course is only for practice just for um for us to get to remember you know how we are going to be using the different voice levels um when it comes to providing questions of choice so it's very important for us to remember that the first option that we offer in a question of choice is going to be pronounced um with an 
upper or higher level of the voice than the one we are going to have as the second option. Um, therefore, we need to remember that, that in the first one or the first ones, because that's also something very important to have in mind, that when we offer or when we have questions of choice, they don't only um, come with two options, they may, co may come with three or more options. So when we have those um, questions in a conversation, it is advised that we do it this way, that we provide a uh, higher pronunciation in the first options that we provide, and we go lower on the pronunciation for the last um, for the last option. Okay, so that's basically it. Now for this one, sadly, Joel, you're gonna have to work harder this evening, but you know we can turn no it into, we can turn it into a um, a private class just for you. Um, so here. We're going to do the would rather, and I have a different option today. Um, now, what I would like to practice is something we didn't do last night, uh, is to answer, well, the positive, which is the most common way of answering, you know, when you pick one of the options, then the negative in which you don't pick any of them, and then um, the third option in which you offer something else not, not any of the of the options that you have in the question but you provide your own um option then picking either of the ones that we have in in the question itself so for the first way um here the question is kind of straightforward would you rather drive a slow car or a fast bike so here we have um, well, the main thing in the question will be security, or at least I see it that way. The, the most important thing in this question will be, you know, the, the, the security level that you may have if you you've drive either of them. Now, Joel, what would you rather? Would you rather uh, drive a slow car or a fast bike? In my case, um, a fast bike, I guess. Okay, I would rather than uh, drive a fast bike. Very good. So those, th that will be the way in which we're going to answer um, when we want to pick one of the options. So when we use I'll rather, and then, of course, the main verb of the question. So I'll rather drive and the option that we're picking. Now, when we're not going to pick any of the options, I think you have already seen this on, on the platform. How are we supposed to answer when we don't want to pick any of the options? Do you remember, um, Joel? Um, being honest with you, I don't. You don't? All right. So here we're going to be using a, a word. I do remember. You do remember? Yes. Okay. How do we how do we do then when we don't want to pick either of the options? Well, I just I just said it there, but how will it be the answer to to the question when we don't want to pick um, neither of them, Emma? Yes, I rather not drive and the verb I think a slow car, either a fast bike or not. Yeah, that will be perfect, you know, for a long answer. Now, if we want to go short, we can say like this. I do, I rather not drive either. Sí, o sea, podríamos hacerlo de ambas. We can say, I will not, uh, I'll rather not drive a slow car. A slow car. Either a fast bike. We can do that. Either a fast bike. But if we want to keep it simple, Sometimes it's the best way to go around it. Um, you can only say, I would, I would rather not drive either. I would rather not drive either. So there it's a fully negative sentence in which you, um, you don't pick either of the options. And you, the only thing need to need that, sorry, the only thing that you have to remember is the fact that you're going to need to add this not before the verb just right after you, you have used rather, and then uh, just writing down or spelling down or saying this um, tiny word that means ninguno. So we only have to do that. I'll rather not drive either. Preferiría no conducir, 
Ninguno, sí, y aquí, o sea, cuando decimos either, en español lo podemos traducir a una opción un poco más larga, que sería ninguno de los dos, pero en inglés, claro, ¿verdad? Eh, se simplifica solamente en either, sí, en español, pues como tenemos la costumbre de generar eh, oraciones más largas, se podría ver que tengamos eh, una oración como esa, sí, decir, I would rather not drive either, um, perdón, en español sería, preferiría no conducir ninguno de los dos, pero en inglés, It's okay if we just say, I would rather not drive either. All right. Now, when we want to provide our own option, um, when we want to do that, it would be something like, I'll rather, and uh, here you can change the verb. That's the, the main thing about offering your own option. You're not um, obliged to pick the verb from the question. So here, for example, you will be able to say, I would rather walk, I would rather walk than, and then you can um, go ahead and do the whole thing. Drive a slow car, a slow car or a fast bike. Once again, this is just when we want to do, um, when we want to do a, a long answer. Of course, the languages are for us to learn and for us to take personal. So if you will be willing to, you can say something as the following. I would rather walk than drive either of those. Yes, than drive either of those. I would rather walk Then drive either of those. Eso sería algo similar, ¿verdad? Como decir en español, conducir um, cualquiera de los dos. Pero cuando eh, ofrecemos una respuesta negativa, ofrecemos nuestra propia opción, nuestra propia respuesta, sería más aconsejable colocar, ¿verdad? Una frase como esta al final. Either of those. Porque aquí ya estás haciendo referencia a cualquiera de esas dos opciones que has, el, has elegido. Porque yo estoy proponiendo mi propia eh, o estoy ofreciendo más bien mi propia opción. Así que por eso se mencionaría o sonaría mejor si yo digo al final, ¿verdad? Either of those. Um, porque si colocamos una vez más, then drive a slow car a fast bike, o sea, eso suena como muy largo y además demasiado repetitivo, demasiado textbook-like. No sonaría natural, no sonaría algo, o sea, que cualquier persona vaya a decir, ¿verdad? Siendo un, un nativo del idioma, eh, lo va a usar de esa forma. Entonces, lo mejor sería irnos con una frase más sencilla como esta, ¿sí? I would rather walk than drive either of those. De esa forma suena muchísimo más natural. Ahora, ¿cuál podría ser otra opción que podríamos elegir que no fuese walk? ¿Cuál podría ser alguna opción que tú elegirías en el caso de Beatriz? En lugar de conducir un carro lento o una motocicleta rápida, ¿qué otra cosa podrías hacer? Mm, I'm sorry, teacher. I, I don't understand. It's okay. Question. It's okay. So something something else that we could do in, instead of driving, you know, a slow car or a fast bike could be I would rather take the bus. I would rather take the bus than drive either of those. Sí, podría ser otra de las opciones, ¿verdad? Preferiría eh, pues irme en el bus que conducir cualquiera de esos dos, o sea, conducir um, ya sea un carro lento o una moto rápida. Aquí simplemente lo que estamos haciendo es una práctica que anoche no pudimos hacer, que era eh, primero pues elegir, ¿verdad? Una de las dos opciones, que sería como lo más básico. Lo segundo sería no elegir ninguna de las dos. Y lo tercero, poder proponer nuestra opción. Entonces, por eso les decía, eh, ofrecer, ¿verdad? Algo que yo haría en lugar de estas otras dos cosas que me están ofreciendo en la pregunta. Ahora, quisiera que tuviésemos una pequeña práctica que sea de forma directa, ¿sí? O sea, donde ustedes generen sus propias preguntas, no eh, poniendo yo las preguntas, sino ustedes. Entonces, si gustan, podemos tomarnos un momento para pensar, ¿verdad?, en alguna, en alguna pregunta que yo le quiera hacer a algún compañero. De momento, lo bueno es que solamente somos tres, eh, así que, o sea, ustedes pueden elegir, ¿verdad?, a quién le quieren preguntar y qué le van a preguntar. Sería una de esas, ¿sí? una, una de las uh, questions of preference o una de las would rather um, questions. Entonces, ustedes pueden elegir el verbo y las opciones que um, les gustaría pues, preguntarle a su compañero. 
para poder practicar, ¿verdad? Estas eh, posibles respuestas y los que van a contestar, me gustaría también que generaran sus ideas en cuanto a contestar en las tres formas distintas, ¿sí? Dependiendo, obviamente la última va a ser más complicado porque va a ser mucho más a quemar ropa, pero pues también me gustaría que lográramos, ¿verdad? Si ninguna de las dos opciones nos, nos complace, ofrecer nuestra propia opción. Recordar que cuando hacemos eso, al principio decimos I'll rather, luego colocamos aquí, ¿verdad? La opción que a mí me parece mejor y luego colocamos then, el verbo de la pregunta que se me hizo y puedo colocar ya sea las dos opciones como se hace en la forma en el libro o podemos eh, hacer algo así como esto o utilizar una frase distinta en la cual solamente digamos, ¿verdad? Cualquiera de ellos o cualquiera de esos dos. Um, pero bueno, mientras hacemos eso, para no estar eh, solo pensando en eso, vamos a, o bueno, más bien, quiero hacerles la pregunta que casi siempre tenemos al principio de las clases. ¿sí? Mientras los otros dos compañeros eh, están trabajando, ustedes pueden tomarse el chance de contestar a la pregunta. So for this evening, the question is going to be, well, related to something we have right ahead. And it's the break, the Easter break. So the question is very simple as well. The question you will have to answer is, do you guys have any plans for this Easter break? Um, any ideas of, of what you would like to do? Or do you have any set plans on what you're going to do for Easter? Um, or any of the days in the Easter break? And I would like to start by getting the answer from Joel. So tell me, Joel, any plans or any ideas for this break? Um, not really. Maybe I'll just go to the beach with my friends or I don't know. As I told you, I don't have any plans yet. But uh, um, how do you say dispuesto? Available. Available. No, yes. Available. Uh, I'm available. Or to, open. To whatever. Open. Open. Yes, I'm open to yeah. any plans. All right. So, yeah. So in, in the case of plans or the, the fact that you want to explain that you are ready to do anything it will be better if we say open now you can also say available if um somebody asks you if you're going to be busy for Talking next week mm -hmm. so if someone some, someone tells you are you busy next weekend you can say no i have a lot of time available or i'm available to do anything um because when you say open it's that if if You know, if some, somebody offers you something, you're open to do that. But available is when the person is right there asking you if you would like to do that. Entonces, sería como open es cuando yo no tengo ni idea si alguien me va a ofrecer una, una, alguna opción para hacer algo. Y available sería cuando ya la persona está preguntándome en el momento, ¿verdad? Si yo estoy ocupado o voy a estar ocupado eh, en algún momento específico. Okay, yeah. thanks. So right now, if you don't have any plans, you will be open to a suggestion. So open yeah. to any kind of plan. All right, very good. Nice to know. Um, now, how about Emma? Do you happen to have any plans for the Easter break? Well, I have some plans, but some of them are that I'm going to go to the mall to buy fast food because I really want to eat a hamburger. Oh, really? And Yes, and after that, I'm going to work in some activities for the university because I have some project and homework to do. During the break? And yes, because if I don't work during the break, I won't finish everything. Oh, all right. And, and maybe work in the platform, and that's all. I don't have any plans. Any? Yes, any plans? to go out because there are many people on the street in, the, in those days. So yeah, that's I don't right. like, yeah. Okay. Okay, good, good. I hope you get to, uh, well, enjoy your hamburger. And here is a phrase we can use when we are having a desire for something. Instead of saying, I, I want, I wish, or, um, well, I desperately need, which would be very dramatic we could use this word, I'm craving, I'm craving something. So when you need anything, it can be uh, a need for a person. If you want to see someone, it can be a need to, I don't know, go to the movies, go somewhere or eating something. So whenever you have like that necessity of something or someone, 
then you are craving. So if you um, desperately want a hamburger, you can say that you are craving a hamburger. And I will totally understand you because I'm like that. I remember when I, um, when I was living in the US, the, they, um, they sell some lemonades that were like with soda or um, yeah, like soda lemonades. And I will sometimes, mostly during the weekend, wake up and have like that huge desire. And I wouldn't be okay to rest um, before I had one of those. Sometimes I remember it will be some, like a hot dog. I will wake up and have that desire, that crave for a hot dog. So yeah, that happens to me very often or it used to happen here. Not that often because I don't really have those many things that, you know, are weird or not easily available. Um, but yeah, when I was living there, I will have that um, desire almost every weekend for something very specific. All right. So crave when you're craving for something is that you wish or desire that thing strongly. Um, how about Beatriz? Do you have Beatriz any plans or any um, wishes for this break? Uh, yes, teacher. Um, I'm going to get up uh, very late tomorrow. All right. <laughs> um, that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I am going to buy something at the mall and then spend time with my parents. Uh, maybe I, I'm going to watch Marvel movies with my brother. Yes, um, and I'm going to practice for my TOEIC exam because oh, you have to take the TOEIC. A, yes, it's a requirement to graduate of my university. Oh, yes, okay. and it's very, it's very difficult for me. Yeah, but I, I, can I am going to practice. All right, good luck. Good luck. Do you do you make a TOEIC exam, teacher? No, actually, what we do is the TOEFL which I have heard oh. is a bit easier than the TOEIC. I haven't really ever taken the TOEIC. I have a few colleagues who have, and they say the TOEIC is a bit harder because it's more um, applied. You know, like when we're talking about specific things that they are not covered in the TOEFL. The TOEFL is more about regular conversations, like day-to-day -day things, but the mm -hmm. TOEIC is more specific on, on technical areas. And the TOEFL isn't like that. So, yeah, pero no, todavía nunca. Nunca he tenido la oportunidad. El TOEFL, sí, mm -hmm. I aced it. Sí, o sea, puedo decirlo con orgullo que en el TOEFL no tuve ningún problema, pero con el mm -hmm. TOEIC eh, nunca lo he probado. O he probado <laughs> hacerlo, así que no sabría que tan difícil yes. es. Uh -huh. Yo tengo unas aplicaciones que se supone que son como casi iguales. Uh -huh. Entonces en esas estoy practicando. Good Porque luck. si ya llevo un par de años, bueno, como un año y medio que egresé y no me puedo graduar porque no, porque tengo que presentar el, el TOEIC. El TOEIC. Oh. ¿Y ya, ya, ¿Ya intentaste sí. antes o primera vez? No. Porque sentí todavía preparado. Okay. Pero sí. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you can make it. I hope you can make uh, it. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. En el, de hecho, el TOEIC lo hacen en mi universidad, ya me acordé, pero lo hacen mayormente los de profesorado y los de técnico. Lo, a nosotros en la licenciatura siempre es el TOEFL el que nos piden. Que de hecho ahorita siempre pasa. En la U hay un montón de gente. Hay como, creo que ahorita el banco es como de... 300 personas más o menos que están que todavía no han pasado el TOEFL y pues por eso no se pueden graduar entonces sí es 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 un montón de gente que está en esa en esa situación pero bueno aquí tengo una frase que acabo de decir hace un momento that makes two of us quisiera saber have you guys ever seen that phrase have you ever used that phrase Joel Emma or Beatriz that makes two of us no it's not me Okay. How about you, Emma? Have you ever seen or used this phrase that makes two of us? No, I have. What's the meaning? Well, the meaning or the, in, in the context in which you can use it is when you agree with uh, the idea that someone just mentioned. When somebody said, for example, a thing that you would like to do as well, 
then you can say that makes two of us. It's basically like an idiom. And um, we use it to, to agree with the expression, sorry, or with the idea that somebody just provided. In the case uh, here, or when I said it, was when Beatriz said that she wants to get up late tomorrow. And then I said, that makes two of us. Then it means that I would like to do the same. I would like to get up late as well. Um, and I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, Beatriz, have you seen Eternal, Eternals yet? The Marvel movie? Yeah, yes, I, I saw in Disney. In, okay. In Disney Plus, yes. Plus, yeah. And what what movie are you planning to watch with your brother? Um, oh, it's, uh, queremos volverlas a ver oh, todas, really? pero ahora de. <laughs> In en English. Pero ahora de la más reciente, la más antigua. Y ah, también en inglés. Sí, yo he hecho sí. eso. Yo estoy ahorita en deuda. <laughs> I, I want to watch the full X-Men series. And um, mm. what else? I don't remember. There was an, oh, a Star Wars, the full Star Wars, a Star Wars series. So yeah. Yes. I don't think I'm gonna have time to do that because I will be working during the break. But still, you know, um, maybe for June when I have the break from the university probably then but yeah marvel it's amazing so enjoy yes um eh, faltan como un par de semanas para la de doctor strange verdad sí ya tengo tickets <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes i got the tickets i i i actually i was supposed to get them uh at noon i mean at at at, at midnight um when they came out but I fell asleep. Se suponía, mis amigos confiaron en mí, me dijeron, vos los compras porque vos tenés la tarjeta, así que ajá, los compras vos. Y me dormí, y fue como que no. <laughs> so I got to, I had to wake up very early in the morning, and I, I at least I got Afraid. the free. Sí, al menos las pude conseguir porque ya estaba llena la sala en la que queríamos verla, en la primera, en el, la primera uh, función. Pero estaban los tres justo donde me gusta. So, yeah, I got lucky. Yeah. All right, so um, then coming back from, from the conversation and going into the, oh, wait, going into the question. Do you have your question, Joel? The question that I was asking you guys to create and who would you like to ask this question? Yes, I go on question for Emma. All right. Would you rather swimming in a pool or in the sea? So Emma, would you rather swim that, in a pool or at the sea? Uh, what was the second option? The sea. In the sea, in the ocean. The ocean. Oh, well, I'd rather not swim either because I can't. <laughs> okay, I'd rather not swim in either. Oh, um, when we're talking about things like that, we can also use prepositions. So we can use it like this. I'd rather not swim in either. Swim, oh, swim in either. See, I'd rather not swim in either. Okay, very good. So you cannot swim, so you're not picking either of them. How about you, Emma? Your question, I will suppose, can be applied to Beatriz. So what will be the question? Okay, well, Beatrice, then, would you rather eat a chocolate cake or a strawberry cake? Uh, I'd rather a uh, chocolate cake. Okay, so it will be, I'll rather eat or have, you can use either, I'd rather eat or have um, chocolate cake. Okay, una pregunta que tengo para ustedes, esto se los voy a hacer en español. Um, ¿Por qué? Aquí, no sé si se fijaron, había un artículo A. ¿Por qué eliminamos ese artículo cuando hablamos o cuando decimos un pastel de chocolate? O sea, ¿por qué no es necesario utilizar ese artículo? ¿Tienen idea ustedes el por qué se elimina? No, I don't know. No, teacher. Ok. So, articles in English are very, very specific. Siempre que ustedes utilicen los artículos, en español los usamos para todo. O sea, en todo momento decimos el, las, un, una, o sea, por todos lados. Pero en inglés se utilizan siempre que ustedes hablan acerca de cosas 
ya bien, bien específicas. Más que todo, obviamente, ¿verdad? El artículo the, que es el que se refiere directamente a eso, a, que es el, el artículo específico que de, eh, menciona, ¿verdad? Directamente a qué nos referimos. Pero aquí, el, choco, el pastel de chocolate, o sea, todavía no lo tenemos. Sí, o sea, no es como que... Um, ya estamos frente al pastel de chocolate. Entonces, cuando hablamos acerca de ese tipo de preferencias imaginarias, simplemente estamos describiendo, ¿verdad? Un pastel de chocolate, pero no sabemos eh, específicamente cuál podría ser. En ese caso, yo no necesito utilizar un artículo porque, o sea, voy a hablar en general acerca de los pasteles de chocolate, por decir así. Entonces, yo digo, I'd rather eat chocolate cake. ¿Por qué no tengo ese pastel aquí? O sea, no tengo un pastel de chocolate que yo pueda solo tomar, ¿verdad? Y ya comer de él. Así que por eso mismo no es necesario utilizar ningún artículo. Así que cuando ustedes vean ese tipo de opciones o, o, o oraciones así, en las cuales no hay un artículo, se puede deber a eso, a que son um, oraciones en general acerca de, o sea, todo lo que puede, ¿verdad?, englobar esa pregunta o de lo, lo que puede tratar ese, ese, ese comentario. So, I'd rather eat or have chocolate cake. Eh, definiría, o sea, que solamente estoy hablando de que preferiría comer eso, pero no digo un, porque no tengo específicamente un pastel de chocolate o ya he elegido también un pastel um, de, 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 de strawberry. Sería diferente si yo dijera algo como lo del el craving, ¿verdad? Si dijera, I'm craving for a chocolate cake. Ahí sí, estoy, o sea, deseando un pastel de chocolate. Porque en ese caso, o sea, yo ya estoy pensando directamente que, o sea, necesito o quiero comer un pastel de chocolate. Pero acá, ya que nos referimos a, en general, a los pasteles de chocolate, entonces no necesitamos utilizar ese um, artículo acá. Muy bien. Now, Emma, your question would be, I think, for Joel, and then I'm going to be asking something to Daniel, porque vino tarde, así que lo vamos a castigar. So, Beatriz, sorry, it was Beatriz. Your question would be... Okay, uh, Daniel, would you, say, would you rather go to the work or make home office? Hmm. Okay, so we're going to go that, with that one for Daniel. That's okay. Um, Daniel, would you rather go to work or do home office? Mm, I rather, si se pudiera, home office. Okay, so mm -hmm. I would rather do home office. Mm -hmm. Now, Joel, how would you answer to that question if you were to offer another option? How would you provide an answer to this question if we were to offer one more option? Um, in a different way. Like taking this example, in el cual tú ofreces una opción, what would be your offer um, apart from either of those? Okay, um, I'd rather work from home than on site. Um, Okay, so there we're taking the, one of the options. Pero, por ejemplo, podríamos decir, I'll rather not work, yeah? I'll rather not work than work uh, on site or from home. O sea, sería eso, ¿verdad? Ofrecer una opción aparte de las cuales ya se nos ofrecieron. Porque aquí, o sea, nos están diciendo, would you rather um, go to work, like, actually go to the office or do home office okay. so you would say I'd rather yes. not work preferiría no trabajar que hacer cualquiera de I'd esas dos yes I'd rather not work at all uh -huh. I'd rather not work at all than either of those than uh, do either of those all right so that will be a way in which we can um, go about this rather questions um, here We're just going to answer this pretty quick and move on to the conversation that we have down here. So, uh, would you prefer to run for a mile or swim, swim half an hour? We already know that Emma is probably going to pick this one. Um, so, first, we're going to start with Daniel. So, tell me, Daniel, would you prefer to run for a mile or swim half an hour? Uh, in my case... I prefer to run for a mile. 
Okay, run for a mile. Very good. So you will prefer to run for a mile. Now, in the case of someone who will not want to do either, ¿cuál de ustedes eh, o quién de ustedes preferiría no hacer ninguna y solo quedarse en el sofá? Ah, todos van a ir a correr. Okay, Joel. So how would you, um, or Emma? Oh, wait. No, it was Emma. So Emma, tell me, how would you, um, how would you say the answer to that question then? I would prefer not to. I prefer not to run either. Or do either. I prefer not to do either. Recordemos que aquí el detalle es, y por eso mismo quería llegar a esta, um, que tenemos dos verbos diferentes, ¿sí? El, tenemos el verbo run y el verbo swim. Entonces, cuando tenemos ese caso, que no podemos quedarnos solamente con una opción, yo voy a cambiarlo con el verbo comodín que tenemos siempre en inglés, que sería el verbo do. Entonces, o, o el verbo hacer, ¿verdad? I prefer not to do either. Sí, o sea, preferiría no hacer Ninguno, sí. So, either run, either sure. swim, ¿sí? Can we add, I prefer not to do either of them. También, sí, Pretty either great. of them, either of them. Sí, sería correcto. I prefer not to I do either that. of them. Yes. All right. Instead, of, I mean, this them can be used uh, in replacement of those. The those that I used before, you can replace it with them. So, it will be totally okay if you do it that way. And for the last one, what option would you offer? Um, Joel, we're going to take your answer here. I prefer to, remember here we offer something different, not any of the options. So what would you do instead of either of these two activities? Okay, um, I'd prefer to work out in the gym than running or swimming. Okay, I prefer to work out at the gym than running or swimming. Uy, no hombre, no es en español. Okay, so here, than um, running or swimming. All right, so there we have it. Those will be then the ways in which we're going to be using prefer. The first one is to pick one of the options. The second one is to um, not pick either of them. And the third one is for us to offer another option, something apart from what we have been mentioned before. Okay, so now it's time for us to move on into the conversation. And this is the conversation we have for this evening. Maybe I should try that. That's the title for it. it it's a little bit long. Somehow it's short but long because the sentences are um, normally two lines as normally we have you, you know just one or one and a half lines but here we have very long um, lines but we're going to be practicing it as well in a minute before we get to that here we have one you as one of the persons taking part in it and Kelly which is the second person in the conversation and if we were if we were to practice it, it should go something as following. So, how's your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, it takes a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to bed. Maybe I should try something like that. Okay, so that's the conversation. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The only thing is that it has a bit um, longer uh, lines than regular. But in it, we have a very good advice for anyone who struggles with new vocabulary. If you're one of those, I will highly recommend for you to take this advice. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever used post-its. I will assume that you'd know uh, how, uh, well, you know, the use of post-its. So if you have access to them, 
And if you ever happen to hear a new phrase to get uh, across a new word or something that ha happens to be interesting to you, I will highly recommend you to take this advice or to take this technique and start practicing it. You know, every time you get a new word, a new phrase, write it down on a piece of paper. And before you go to bed, go ahead and practice it or um, say it or say all of the phrases you have. And once you have memorized it or once you have used it or apply it in, in context, then you can take it away because it's never okay for a language learner to say that you're going to memorize something. The best op option is to normally apply the sentence or apply the new knowledge, not memorizing, but using them. So once you feel that you can use that phrase or you can use that word in context, then you're going to know that it's time for you to rip it off the wall, rip it off any, any surface in which you have pasted and maybe try pasting a new one. Entonces, ese sería un, un, un muy buen consejo para cualquiera, ¿verdad? Que pues tenga el deseo o si no tienen ustedes su propia estrategia para poder memorizar nuevo, um, nuevo vocabulario, sean estas palabras o frases que les parezcan interesantes, podríamos tratar de hacer algo como esto. ¿sí? Aunque el consejo que les doy yo desde mi parte es no necesariamente enfocarnos en la memorización, porque el lenguaje no se trata acerca de memorizar, ¿verdad? Porque si nos pusiéramos a esas, o sea, cuando necesitemos utilizar las palabras o las frases, puede que nos quedemos en blanco. Sí, porque si fallamos en cuestiones de la memoria, entonces ahí ya vamos a haber perdido, ¿verdad? La fluidez en la comunicación. Lo más importante es aplicar tanto las palabras como las frases que vayamos aprendiendo en contexto. El, en el momento en el cual ustedes sientan que pueden utilizar esa palabra o esa frase ya con, teniendo una conversación con alguien de forma fluida, en ese momento entonces ustedes van a decir, ok, esta palabra, esta frase, yo ya la manejo, ya no necesito seguirla repasando aquí en la pared, porque ya sé qué significa, ya sé en alrededor de qué otras palabras puedo utilizarla, o ya sé en qué momento yo podría utilizar esta frase. Entonces, eh, eso sería algo bien importante, ¿verdad?, que tomar en cuenta para pues, poder practicar nuevo vocabulario. Porque pues, el vocabulario quizás sea una de las partes más principales a la hora de poder eh, comunicarnos, ¿verdad?, en un idioma que sea pues, un tercero, segundo idioma. Así que eh, pues, puede ser una muy buena estrategia que seguir. Now, do you have any questions, any doubts, any word, any phrase that um, calls your attention from this conversation? But if you don't, we're going to go right into the practice. But first, you know, it's always I good. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Tell me. I don't understand what it means. I always seem to forget new words. Uh, I always seem to forget new words. Okay, seem is something um, similar to an idea. Parecer. See, I always seem to forget new words. So the phrase will be something in Spanish, something like siempre parezco olvidarme de las palabras nuevas o, el, o las nuevas, eh, el nuevo vocabulario. So I always seem to do something, not only forget, but I always seem uh, is a phrase we would use with things that we do without um, intention. So something that we don't intend to do. I always seem. So when we use this is when something happens around us or when we do something, but that we're not intending to do. It's not something that we do on purpose. So I always seem um, to forget. That will be one of the most common things that you're going to say with uh, seem. I, am, I always seem to forget. But you can change it, for example, for something like I always seem to hurt people. Yeah, I always seem to... Um, to leave my shoes all spread across my, my room. I always seem to, um, to like new songs by a specific artist. So seem, something you do, but you don't do it on purpose. You do it um, with the intention of, you know, creating another situation. Entonces, seem, siempre parezco, algo que no podemos controlar, algo que nosotros hacemos eh, sin la intención, ¿verdad? De tal vez dañar otra cosa, otra persona. 
Entonces ahí vamos a utilizar esta palabrita. I always seem to. Y esta es importante que recordemos también. Se va a acompañar siempre de un infinitivo. Recordamos que los infinitivos es cuando colocamos esta partícula. Y después el verbo en su forma base. So I always seem to will be the full phrase. And then you can use either verb and either complement that you need. Okay, thank you, Emma, very much for the doubt. Now, any other doubt or any other um, phrase that calls your attention in the conversation? Okay, so it seems like no. Now, we're going to practice then. Who would like to start practicing this conversation? Who would like to be um, the first couple on doing it? Okay, so it will be Joel and Joel. Joel and Daniel, very good. So Joel and Daniel, and then we're gonna have Emma and Beatriz. Okay, so whenever you feel ready, Joel and Daniel. Okay, voy yo entonces ahorita. All right. So how's your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, I take a while to get it, to get it right. You could improve your accent, your accent by listening to language this. That's a good idea, but how do you learn new, new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing them on piece of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every every night before i go to sleep hmm, maybe i should try something like that all right very good very very good good fluency good pronunciation um the only thing over here would be uh accent accent see accent by listening to language cds uh how about you emma and beatriz how would you guys do it's your turn to practice the conversation Okay, well, I'm going to start. Uh, so, how's your French class going? Not bad, not bad, but I am feeling the pronunciation difficult. Well, it takes a while, a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good, good I'm sorry, that's a good idea. But, I, but how do you learn new vocabulary? New vocabulary. I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing them off piece of paper and sticking them up things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Maybe I should try something like that. Okay, something like that. Very good. So here is another thing that caught my attention, and I think I haven't really uh, explained this before. Um, it's when we use the word best here, when we're describing something. Um, you can say simply the verb, and then you can use this um, adjective to describe the things that you do best or the activities that you do best. So it's possible, it's always going to be possible to use an action and an adjective right after. Um, for example, you can say, I learn best, I learn best at night. I learn best at night. Um, you can say, I play best, I play best on a grass field, on a grass field. Eso sería para los que son jugadores, ¿verdad? I play, I play best on a grass field. Um, obviamente cuando hablamos de grass field sería un campo natural, o sea, un, un campo de verdad de, um, de césped, no necesariamente sintético. Um, or you can say, I pronounce best, y perdón por esta, pero esta es una que muchas personas dicen, so I'm, I'm going to use it. I pronounce best when I'm drunk. I don't know if it's your case or if you have, you have ever right. tried it. 
do you <laughs> yeah many people yes. say this is this is right um i don't know if that works for me because i have never actually um proven it but probably i don't know i have a friend who works in a call center right now and she used to say this a lot um that she would pronounce best or she will be more fluent uh, when she was drunk so this is another option um or For example, you can you can say, I rest best when at work. <laughs> when at work. Sí, o sea, descanso mejor cuando estoy trabajando. I mean, the ones who have the chance, you know, to take a nap uh, at their job. So that, los uh, what is de seguridad, I rest best when at work. Um, and this is something you can, you can do then. Siempre que ustedes tengan... Eh, esto, eh, o sea, la, la oportunidad de explicar algo que ustedes hacen mejor dependiendo, ¿verdad? De otra situación, podemos hacerlo con esta estructura. I do something best y luego ya la situación que va a facilitar, ¿verdad? Eh, que ustedes se sientan um, o hagan esta, esta actividad pues de mejor manera. Um, we can go with, for example... Wait, no, I'm going to take your examples. What things do you do best under what circumstances? Daniel, ¿qué sería algo que usted hace mejor? ¿Y cuál sería la circunstancia que provoque que usted haga esa actividad mejor? Eh, de... A ver. I, 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 I sleep very well. Ok, I sleep best, vamos a poner. Best. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When I stay, when I stay in my job. Okay, I I sleep best. So aquí para hacer, para hacerlo mucho más fácil sería I sleep best in my yard. Sí, okay. I sleep best in my yard. Y así, o sea, el punto principal es como simplificar la oración cuando utilizamos esto de el best. Sí. Entonces, I sleep best in my yard. Duermo mejor en el patio. All right. Thank you. Now, Beatriz, what would be something or an activity you do that you do best under um, what circumstance? En el patio le puse, yo no le dije el patio. ¿O qué dijo? ¡Ay! ¡Está encendido el micrófono! ¿O qué dijo entonces? No entendí. Cuando estoy en el trabajo. Oh, entonces at work. Perdón. Sería I sleep best at work. Ahí está. Ah, okay. Es que esa es la broma que les estaba diciendo yo antes. Duermo mejor en el trabajo. Ah, y es cierto. Okay, uh -huh. porque voy a apagar el micrófono ahorita. <risa> Lo cachamos renegando. Ok, um, Beatriz. <risa> I consent, concentrate. ¿Cómo podría decirme concentro? Concentrate. I concent, concentrate uh, best when I am alone. Okay. When I'm, aquí tenemos dos formas. Les recomendaría más esta. By myself. Sí, when I'm by myself. Yeah. Cuando decimos esto, I'm by myself, se refiere, ¿verdad? A que, o sea, no estoy con nadie más alrededor. Porque la cosa es que hay muchas ocasiones en las cuales usar la, la, la palabra alone en inglés, hoy en día más que todo, ¿verdad? Que las cuestiones de la psicología y todo eso se han alterado más. Eh, se puede entender, o sea, como una soledad completa. Entonces puede que, um, que suene drástico decir when I'm alone. Entonces puede que suene mejor decir when I'm by myself. Se puede usar, sí, pero en algunos casos puede que suene, ¿verdad? Algo um, drástico. Ok, Emma, what will be your activity and what provides you, um, well, the quality to do, the, to do it in a much better way? I drive best on the road okay i drive best on the road yeah right yes okay espero que no se vaya a quedar Emma después diciendo yo no le dije eso yo le dije que igual well, drunk no okay so i drive best <laughs> on the road ya sabe va. okay so i drive best on the road yeah you i mean probably it's harder for you to drive under uh, or uh, over other surfaces like on what you might call it i forgot the name it's a drive yeah a drive when you talk about a drive It refers to um, a street that goes along a lake or a river 
that can be known as a drive or a drive is normally a, a very curved street. But okay, moving on, Joel, what will be your activity? Um, I learn English best by listening to music. All right, I, English best. And that's true. By listening to music. And what kind of music provides you with the best vocabulary? I don't know, but I like rock classic, classic rock. Classic rock. Okay. When we talk classic, how classic are we talking? Are we talking like For Queen? Could it be? Okay. Yeah, that's my that's my jam actually. Right now on Spotify, that's what I'm playing, or that's what I've been playing for the last three days, I think. I started that um that playlist, 80s, 80s rock. And yes, yeah, amazing. It's, yeah, wonderful. Today I, I actually got surprised because I got in I got in my car. I um, switched it on, and when the radio started playing, I was surprised because I was listening to an ACDC song, and I was like, okay, so that's amazing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good sometimes when I don't remember what I'm playing on Spotify, and then when I get in the car, I listen to what I was play last playing, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty cool. All right, now, thank you for actually mentioning um, the last thing when you said by listening to music, because that, parece como si lo planeamos, actually brings us to the next topic. We're probably not going to be covering this topic in full this evening, but at least we're going to have an idea of what it refers to. Okay, so by plus a gerund. That is a very use, um, usually, or yeah, it's a commonly used structure. When we want to explain the reason behind something. And that was actually what I was trying to do with this. Remember, I was trying to get to know um, what activities you guys develop and under what circumstances. So when we use by plus a gerund, we are actually doing that, explaining the reasons why something happened or um, what probably provides a better quality on the activities that we develop. Um, so here we have it. You can improve your English accent, or sorry, your accent by listening to language CDs. Here we have it then, by listening, see, a través de escuchar. So this is what provides the, um, the option or the possibility for us to carry out, carry out the activity mentioned in the first phrase. You can improve your accent by listening. Now, It's important to remember, cuando utilizamos el by siempre, ¿sí? siempre, siempre, siempre después de by, el verbo va a estar en su forma participial del presente o como lo conocemos más bien en inglés, su forma del gerundio, ¿verdad? El gerundio siempre se va a hacer el momento en el cual el verbo está escrito con la forma ing al final. ¿sí? You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. Um, I learn new words best by writing them down on pieces of paper and sticking them on things. Sí, o sea, tenemos que, también lo podemos hacer de esta forma. Tenemos dos verbos incluso en una misma oración, ¿verdad? Porque son dos actividades que hacemos que nos ayudan a poder desarrollar la primera frase que se mencionó. En la primera frase, mencionamos la actividad, lo que nosotros hacemos. And then, when we use by, ¿sí? Tenemos que, de ahí en más, vamos a explicar lo que nos ayuda, la actividad que a mí me ayuda a mejorar en la actividad que mencioné al principio. Porque aquí, por ejemplo, tenemos improve. Eso es lo que yo estoy haciendo, ¿verdad? Improve, mejorar. Estoy mejorando el acento. Pero lo que me ayuda a mejorar el acento sería lo que voy a mencionar después del by. By listening to language cities. O si no, yo puedo decir by speaking with native Um, native speakers of the language. Or I can also say by watching my movies in, in the target language or um, by using my phone in the target language. The target language being any language that you want to mention. Si ustedes quieren hablar acerca del francés, el alemán, italiano, cualquiera, por eso digo target language y no necesariamente verdad en frasco solamente al inglés. Um, so the next one will be, or, or the last sentence, The best way to learn slang is not by reading the newspaper, but by watching movies. Okay, so here we have a, con 
uh, contradictory option in which we are going to negate one of the of the options by providing the best option at the end. Sí, en este caso se hace una, una cuestión contradictoria en la cual se niega ¿sí? la como factuabilidad de una de las opciones a través de mencionar una más al final. So, the best way to learn slang is not by reading newspapers, but by watching team, uh, movies. Sorry, by watching movies. Pero bueno, vamos a continuar hablando de eso um, al regresar, ¿verdad? El próximo lunes. Por ahora, vamos a hacer entonces el cambio de anteojos y pues nos vamos. See, ¿Sí? so thank you guys very much for your attention this evening. I'm going to be seeing you uh, on next Monday. We're not going to be working, remember, this coming week. So get to rest, enjoy your days, enjoy the break. If you have time, um, get go to sleep early. And I will be seeing you then on the coming uh, Monday. Well, actually, uh, one Monday after this one. So thank you very much. Have a really good night. And I'll see you. Uh, in a week. Good night. Okay. Bye bye, guys. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.